back stays in the neutral position. Make sure you don't lean back as the arms lift. If you want to lift the arms a little higher, that's fine, as long as the back stays in its neutral position. Switch pedals. Here you're going to pedal from one foot to the other, keeping the pelvis stable. Make sure the knee goes directly forwards. So the movement starts with a hip hinge. Push the bottom back, bend the knees, and let the weight come forwards, keeping the spine in line. This is a movement that we learn to learn the correct lifting technique to avoid back injuries. We breathe out as the two arms go behind the head. Again, keeping the shoulder blades on the floor and trying not to stick out the ribs. This is an exercise to improve the general mobility and flexibility of the spinal column. As you lift the pelvis, think of lengthening the thighs and push the knee slightly forwards. Aim to create space between each vertebra. To make the exercise more difficult, when you arrive in the bridge position, you can lift one heel, lower, and then the other heel, making sure that the pelvis stays at the same height throughout. As both feet are lifted, the lower back is now flat on the floor, the abdominals held in towards the spine. This exercise can be done with the head on the mat or with the head and shoulders lifted. Make sure you have the correct position of the head to avoid tension in the neck. If you have a little bit more strength in the abdominals, you can extend the legs slightly lower. And again, you can do this exercise with the head and shoulders lifted. Make sure the abdominals stay strong to support the lower back. And always listen to your body. If this exercise is too strenuous for you, then take a breather. Here you're going to lift one leg off the floor, keeping it as straight as possible, and keeping the hip and the pubic bone on the floor. Remember, the height of the leg is not important. What's important is the length of the leg, so make sure the leg doesn't bend as you lift. It's difficult because you can't see the leg. You have to feel it. This is a lovely exercise for improving mobility of the spine, for taking the back into its two extreme positions. Arching and then rounding the back. Imagine that you have a tail, the tail goes between the legs and then the tail goes up towards the ceiling. Here you're going to extend the legs so they have a straight line without lifting the bottom too high. So you have a straight line from the shoulders to the heels, keep the shoulder blades drawn down the back and the navel pulled in towards the spine. without lifting the leg too high so that you can keep that neutral position of the pelvis, hip above hip. More challenging is with the bottom leg lengthened. Breathe in and lift. Flex the foot, breathe out and lower. Sit as tall as possible to start the exercise. Then curve the lower back to form the letter J. The shoulders and the chest open. We're gradually going to make the movement bigger to form the C shape. Q 
keep the C shape as you move forward and then the letter I from the base of the spine up towards the top of the head. It's only a small circle keeping the body stable. Change direction. Lift the left leg, take hold of the left heel with the right hand, open the left hip and pull the foot towards the shoulder and then across to the right side. Hold the position for a few seconds, breathe deeply. Make sure that you don't arch the back, but think of lifting the pubic bone up towards the ceiling in a posterior pelvic tilt. Flatten the lower back. Lateral stretch. Take one arm over the head and bend to the right side. Again, make sure that both hip bones stay on the mat. Change sides. Breathe out and stretch to the other side. You feel the stretch down the sides of the body. And come back to centre.